Hello, good afternoon to all of you. It's really wonderful seeing all these lovely faces and uh, having all these uh, people with us today. I'm Uma Bokil, I'm the co-founder. I head the publishing process of every book that comes through. And I've been a part of this family since quite a while now. When I first met Mr. Sanjay, it was about a year ago. And uh, the journey of having published two books with him already has been overwhelming. It has been motivating and it has been awe-inspiring to say the least. But despite that, when he told me the concept of this book, of what he aspired to do, of what the purpose of this book was going to be, it had left me speechless, it had left me stumped, and I was sure right then that this book was going to be a huge hit and a huge success. I have collaborated, associated with him since the first word that he wrote, and he has continued to leave me stumped time and again. What we have in the book is a lot about what we do in society towards people who are visually impaired, audio impaired, physically impaired. And uh, normally what we tend to react to this as uh, there is one very, uh, I call it a token of a word, which we have all heard, it's called bechara. And that is what we always address them by. But these players, and these are among so many other people who have gone through this, they chose to say no to the pity, to the bechara pan, to whatever um, was putting them down by the society. They decided that they were not different, they were just like all of us. They could achieve, they could inspire, and they could achieve glory for themselves, for the country, and for the world. Title Glory Beyond Dreams, it's going to be a collection of 10 true accounts of players, of para-athletes, of para-personalities who have brought endless glory to our nation, our motherland, time and again, by putting the Indian flag across in various countries, wherever they have participated in tournaments, wherever they have gone, where people know them, and they know India because of them. Some of the featured players are here with us today, and I would be very honored to ask them to join me upon stage. I would also like our founders, Mr. Sagar Kumar Bharadwaj and Mr. Anush Goel, to felicitate them. Mr. Sandeep Singh Dillon, international badminton player who has backed 11 medals at the World Championships and is the chief manager at ONGC and a recipient of the Arjuna Award, the Shiv Chhatrapati Award and the National Award. I would also like to invite his mother, Ms. Kavaljeet Kordalan, who has been the moral support for Mr. Sandeep. <laughs> Married to retired ex-Army Army Colonel Gyan Prakash Singh Dillon, she is a mother to three children, two daughters, and Mr. Sandeep is the youngest. Aryan Joshi, blind chess player and para swimmer, who has won 55 trophies in swimming and chess, and is the first ever Indian to win a medal on board one in the 16th IBCA World Chess Olympiad in October 2021 in Greece. And Mr. Arvind Prabhu, owner of the PTKS complex, because of whom we have the privilege to have this event here today. The president of All India Pickleball Association and Mumbai Suburban Table Tennis Association. It is a very, very big honor to be standing next to all of you here today and to be sharing the stage with you, speaking about this with you, and to hear what you have to say about your experiences and your journeys. May I please request Mr. Sagar and Mr. Anush to join me upon stage? I would like to request Mr. Sagar Kumar Bhadwaj to felicitate Mr. Sandeep Singh Dillon.
Mr. Anush Goel to Ms. Kavaljeet Kaur Dillon. Mr. Sagar Kumar to Aryan Joshi. And Mr. Anush Goel to Mr. Arvind Prabhu. Thank you so much, Mr. Sagar, Mr. Anush. We will now commence with the session. I would request you all to please take a seat. We will be hearing a lot about the book with uh, these people present here, uh, which will be moderated by Kashish Lewis. First of all, before I even say a word, can we hear a, another big round of applause for all these incredible people that I'm sitting with. Can I just take one minute to tell you how thrilled I am? I have goosebumps just talking to you with them from stage. And it's an honor, not just because of their glory, what they've done for the country, for sports, for sports people, but also because I'm truly thrilled and I can say in awe of the kind of motivation and zeal they have within them. Isn't it? That deserves another big round of applause for every single thing that they've done so far. That zest to keep moving forward, that zest, that zeal, the passion to want to achieve something that's just incredible. Today I have five incredible athletes that I wanted to talk about. However, few of them couldn't make it here because of medical reasons, but I'm happy at least we have three incredible athletes here with us today. And we have the mother of Mr. Sandeep Singh Dhilon with us today. She's an emotional support for Mr. Sandeep Singh Dhilon and that matters so much. A big round of applause for Mrs. Kowaljeet Kaur and her dedication towards making something happen for her son. Today, I will just quickly start off by introducing you a little bit again to these players, just so that I have what they do imprinted in your minds. Mr. Arvind Prabhu is the president of the All India Pickleball Association and Mumbai Suburban Ten Table Tennis Association and he's a pickleball player himself. A big round of applause for him, please. <laughs> Mr. Sandeep, Sandeep Singh Dhilon is seated at my left, and he is an international badminton player who has bagged 11 medals at the World Champions 7G, 1S, 3B, and Chief Manager. He is currently the Chief Manager HR in ONGC, and he's a recipient of the Arjuna Award Shiv Chhatrapati Award, and the National Award for the Best Employee. Isn't that incredible? Like I said, we have Mrs. Kavaljeet Kaur right here. And she is married to a retired ex-army. His name is Colonel Gyan Prakash Singh Dhilon. And she is the mother to two beautiful daughters as well, who are older than Mr. Sandeep and he's her youngest son. Pretty sure you were the pampered one, isn't it? <laughs> and <laughs> coming to Mr. Aryan Joshi, who's seated at my right, I'm pretty sure you can guess, he's one of the youngest on stage today. Please give him a big round of applause. He's a blind chess player and para swimmer. He is currently number three in India. 55 trophies in his name for swimming and chess, and the first ever Indian to win a medal on board one in the 16th IBCA World Chess Olympiad in October 21 in Greece. 
goosebumps, isn't it? Let's dig in a little more about their lives. I would like to start with Mr. Arvind Prabhu, who's seated at my right here. Can I have the mic for him, please? Thank you. Here, I'll help you with this. Check, yeah. So in the book, I mean the apt title of course, isn't it? Glory Beyond Dreams. It's something that they couldn't have thought to achieve, but it happened any which ways. So Mr. Arvind Prabhu, I was so thrilled and excited to read your story, especially because it was, it was something that was unexpected. That accident that changed everything. Would you like to tell me a little bit about how you felt in that moment? And how do you feel now when you look back at that? Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, Sanjay, sir, for making me part of this incredible book. There are heroes like Mr. Dillon and my friend over here who have surpassed, surpassed complete. Uh, I mean, they have surpassed anyone's capabilities. And I'm happy to be a part of this. When I met with my accident, I was a young 20-year-old uh, studying in my final year in my medical college in Bangalore. And I met with my accident one night. And the next morning, it was, I realized that I was going to be paralyzed from my neck downwards. And initial shock was there. Initially, it was whether I'm going to survive or not. Uh, the doctors uh, gave me a 20% chance of survival. That was 35 years ago. And here I am in front of you, almost alive and kicking in the real sense. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, first couple of years were difficult, coming to terms with uh, the so-called disability. I uh, was a sports person. I used to represent my school and my college in table tennis and badminton. And coming from that background to being completely immobilized without any sensation from the chest downwards uh, was a little bit of an adjustment to make. Although the incredible support I got from my friends, my family, and my relatives, my parents, my brother, my sister, made me get through those difficult times. I promised my mother on the ninth day that I met with my accident, after I met with my accident, that I won't lie in a bed and I'll not be uh, a, a burden on anybody. And I will start, get, I will get up as soon as I'm ready and make myself completely independent. This was on the ninth day after my accident. So pretty soon I had realized that I need to start getting up and doing something on my own. The rehab took me six to eight months. Uh, I was in the US for my rehab. And uh, after coming back, I started my own uh, business and uh, taking my step towards financial independence and also social independence, which I slowly achieved. And here I am in front of you to be featured among all these incredible human beings uh, which Sanjay sir has put together. So I thank him for that once again. I'll try to keep it short, Kashish because we have to listen to these wonderful gentlemen. But thank you so much for having me here. Thank you so much, thank you. I just want to go back to that little uh, sentence that he said about being a burden. I'm a little heavy hearted to know that so many people out there are going through this. They feel like they are a burden. So I would just like to direct this question to the both of you, on my left and my right, to Mr. Sandeep Singh Dillon, and to you, Aryan Joshi. Would you like to share a little bit, starting from you, Aryan Joshi, would, we, would you like to share a little bit about the feeling of how people feel burdened when they are not the normal fits in society? Would you have a few thoughts to share about that? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would also like to thank Sanjay sir for featuring me in this book and it's a great honor uh, because uh, I'm with uh, such big personalities like Sandeep sir, Arvind sir and, and all others. So uh, coming to your question, actually uh, 
देर इज अ सोशल बर्डन आई गेस लाइक द सोसाइटी बिकॉज एज वी आर डिफरेंट नॉट डिसेबल्ड बट डिफरेंटली एबल्ड सो पीपल डोंट एक्सेप्ट इट वेरी फास्ट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट स्टार्ट विद फैमिली आई एम एम ग्लैड दैट माई फैमिली सपोर्टेड मी माई फैमिली फ्रेंड्स स्कूल कॉलेज सो द बर्डन इज बेसिकली सोशल बर्डन एंड आई थिंक इफ यू हैव अ गुड सपोर्ट एंड इफ यू हैव स्ट्रॉन्ग यू कैन ओवरकम इट एब्सोल्यूटली आई थिंक मैम यू वुड ऑल्सो हैव समथिंग टू शेयर वट डू यू थिंक अबाउट how the society thinks of disabled people or people with any kind of impact on their life that is not termed normal how do you think you take it or how do you think society takes it society doesn't take uh, society doesn't take it like one second ma'am mic check mic check society <coughs> doesn't take it nicely but one has to go on it is only the family who then slowly you can carry on with the life and you, and you can help your child and then you can become he is not a, a dependent on anybody he is he thinks he is, this is a normal thing it is happen some doesn't have a um, A hearing. I have. I don't have a hearing. Mm-hmm. So, but otherwise, I am a normal person. He drives. He drives mm-hmm. the car. He goes and he goes. Mm-hmm. And he plays a all over the country. I don't think. is a pattern on anybody so i do remember the call that i had with you just yes. a little before the event yes. and we had a little chat about how as a kid mr sandeep was always into sports here and there ah uh, yes always yeah could he you tell uh, the audience a little bit about the conversation that we had that day he that he was always wanted to do something especially he was a, a skates player he loved skating but then we th- all thought and his sisters thought that skating is not good for him because he started going on the roads and he used to people used to come and tell my husband that your son sir we saw your son on the road skating so then one day we sat and said ke no this the he should do some other game so we used to go to the us club and he started go- playing the game he started playing me squash he started playing uh, tennis b- badminton and everything he tried and ultimately he decided we decided on the badminton and uh, it was then we came to after that he picked up the badminton form his coach was first was uh, say uh, shaukat ali mr shaukat ali and after he won the school uh, championship bombay school championship he said now he ke i he is beyond me i must introduce you to mr sanjay sharma now he should take over then mr sanjay sharma was his coach and he helped him a lot and this is how he brought him up and he won uh, olympics he uh, won 20 20 years he was a olympian and uh, number one badminton doubles player for 20 years and incredible and five uh, uh, consecutive olympics he won for the country and then he he was in the ongc working with ongc now he is happy with them that's great that's great isn't it i was in awe when i had this conversation because to be honest i wasn't much of a sports girl and i myself um, had lung issues and admired the sports world from far away um from my window i used to watch a lot of football games a lot of basketball games in my school and i was always amazed at how people could play this much and achieve so much in this field and today i cannot even believe it that i am surrounded by so many people in the sports area that i did not imagine would be a part of my life and i'm really thankful for that thank you so much for sharing that with us and i would come back to mr aryan joshi 
if you would like to tell me a little bit about you in the book it's mentioned how you were drawn to chess because of your family right because of your dad and yeah. uh, your family it's written that you are you were just drawn to it because it was played in your family right. but other than that is there anything specifically that makes you want to keep playing chess and want the entire world to play chess what is that one thing that you would like to share other than your family that draws you to chess yeah so basically i started chess because of my father uh, my father and my elder brother used to play and i used to just sit beside and uh, i was very interested after a point and i said teach me as well i want to learn and that's how it started and i think what keeps me going is just uh, the thrill of the game so uh, you know when you play when you not just winning or losing but i just enjoy the game and i want uh, everyone to play uh, chess because it improves uh, your decision making ability and many other aspects which actually help you in your education and life as well so aryan you also are a champion at school <laughs> not just sports he gets amazing grades at school and you had chosen to take bcom and then now you're also prepping for your mba yeah so if not for sports let's just say that maybe you didn't pick the career in sports what would you be and why the mba uh if not sports uh if i had a vision i would go in the army because uh, i want to serve my country and i like that was one way which i used to think uh in my childhood but uh being blind i cannot go in the army so if not sports i want to become a businessman so i am doing mba for that purpose basically that's incredible can i have a big round of applause the i want to give back is something that strikes me so much about in fact all of them all of them here that's something that is in common a common ground that i want to give back doesn't matter what it is but i want to give back coming to the point of i want to contribute to the society and give back i want to go back to mr arvind prabhu he's been giving back to the society for so many years through ptks through his various other tournaments that he arranges various other activities that he holds for sports people to become champions today so would you like to share a little bit coming to the point of a businessman you told in the first half that you started a little business with the cable tv so the let's uh, if you don't mind can we delve a little bit into the mind of a businessman and what made you shift from the whole profit making to giving back to the society idea of business so basically when i was uh, in the us uh, getting rehabilitated uh, lying down in a bed i used to look at various channels which were available on american television this is way back in 1988 and uh, i could use the remote control and uh, i was fascinated uh, with seeing 16 channels in the us in 1988 and i decided then and there that once i get back to india i'm going to start a cable tv network um, in mumbai and in india uh, with that in mind i did a lot of uh, research uh, uh, in in canada and in new york itself and came back and started my cable television network in 80 uh, in 1990 uh, as you remember in 1990 we had only doordarshan and sayadri in mumbai uh and and sayadri also used to be for 2 hours a day or something like that uh i came back and uh, installed a satellite dish on top of my house and the cnn was the channel which used to beam the uh, iraq kuwait war which happened at that time and that is how i started my cable television business the business grew and in 1991 92 it kept on growing Uh, i innovated a lot into business started uh, a franchising system made a public limited company sold the public limited company made a little bit of money put the money here there 
lot of things I did in business. Uh, it wasn't giving me that kind of satisfaction and it wasn't uh, in myself. I was not finding that uh, peace of mind. It's making money is one thing, but uh, I was still very uh, unhappy with what I'm doing with my life. And that is a point when, because I'm coming from a political family and I'd seen my father, my grandfather, my mother doing social work. And I used to wonder what is it that drives them to do social work. Uh, my parents both uh, were doctors and uh, they would serve people. I, I, would, I remember in my childhood, even if we got a call at two o'clock in the night, my mother and father, they would run to a patient's house. And I kept on wondering what motivates them to serve people. It's only around uh, 2006 or 2007, uh, after doing this, after doing that, dabbling in business, uh, being financially independent, that I started thinking about giving to people. Uh, that was the time when I met these two incredible visually impaired guys, uh, Deepak and um, the other guy, I forget his name, but yeah. So Deepak, uh, uh, they came to me and they said, uh, we want to start a visually impaired uh, musical band, and looking at their uh, looking at their enthusiasm, and they were from Ruya College, and uh, they had done their philosophy graduation and graduation in Hindi literature, being visually impaired. So, uh, Mr. Joshi, I completely understand how difficult the academics were, but how you can overcome them also. So I started uh, uh, handholding with them and promised them that uh, by the end of their association with me, they would be self-sufficient and make enough money to sustain themselves. Uh, I'm glad to say that uh, after 2006, 2007, uh, these guys, uh, Keval and Deepak, both of their names, and they have a band known as Udan. Uh, I helped them and handheld them for about 100 shows and today I'm glad they have started their own trust, their own foundation, where they are helping other visually impaired children. So, you know, that is the kind of uh, satisfaction uh, that I got. Uh, there's another small uh, story which uh, I want to tell over here is one girl uh, by the name of Jasmina Khanna. Uh, I had started an uh, ambulance service for people with disabilities also, known as Access for All. This service used to take visually, not visually, so any kind of disability, mainly wheelchair bound uh, uh, people from point A to point B as a taxi service. Because I realized that in a city like Mumbai, getting from point A to point B on a wheelchair is very, very difficult. Even today, uh, I get so many calls because Mumbai is a very inaccessible city. So I had started uh, Access for All in 2008. And I got a call from uh, one Jasmina Khanna. Uh, she had cerebral palsy and uh, she mentioned to me that she had got a job in SEEPS in Andheri. And uh, she was a software specialist. And uh, she said, you know, I've got this incredible job paying me 8,000 rupees uh, a month. 8,000 rupees in 2008 was not too much, but just the satisfaction of her doing something productive. She was so excited about it. And uh, I said, okay, uh, Jasmina, I, I, my service will help you. Pick you up from Lokhandwala in the morning at eight o'clock, drop you to Seeps at nine o'clock, uh, pick you again at 5.30 in the evening, drop you home. And I will charge you 150 rupees for that per day. And she says, uh, Mr. Prabhu, 150 rupees is too much for me. So I said, okay, you decide and you give whatever you can. So she started paying me about 125 or something, or something like that. And although I was going in loss, I said, okay, no problem. Six months down the line, Jasmina calls me with a box of uh, chocolates and said, I've become permanent uh, at my job and I'm gonna start paying you 200 rupees a month. I said, wow, that's great. You know. uh, this is incredible. Uh, one year down the line, she says, sends one year down the line, she sends me a bigger box of chocolate and a bigger bouquet. And she says, tell me how much you want to charge me. 
I have become a team manager. Oh. Uh, so I said, what is your salary? So she said, uh, I'm uh, getting about 20,000 rupees a month. I said, wow, that's incredible. So please pay me 300 rupees. She said, no, I will pay you 350 rupees. <laughs> I said, wow, that is incredible. <laughs> So this is a very unconventional <laughs> businessman route, isn't it? <laughs> Who would have thought business could be that easy? <laughs> At the end of the time, uh, after a year or two, uh, she got promoted and um, she was in a position to pay me almost eight or 9,000 rupees a month. And that is the time when I told her that I will help you uh, fund for a, for a car for yourself. By that time, Tata Nano had already come in. And you can easily pay the driver 10,000 and have your own car. Uh, she did manage that. <laughs> you know? So, uh, incredible story of this girl uh, becoming financially independent. And uh, cerebral palsy, she can't even sit on a wheelchair steadily. She's continuously has her spasms and moves. Uh, but she said that, that just that little bit of the transportation bit helped her so much and empowered her so much that in her house, uh, uh, now she doesn't have her parents, but her uh, brother and the, her, her bhabi and all look forward to uh, seeing her and receive her in the house because now she's a contributing member to the family. Okay, once I found that out, that gave me immense, immense satisfaction. And uh, even if I could uh, change somebody's life like that, you know, it, it gave me great treasure. And uh, so from that point of time, I started Big round uh, of thinking that, yeah. that giving, giving a little bit of joy, giving a little bit of independence, uh, giving that freedom of uh, financial uh, security uh, is what really matters in today's world. And that is the time I thought of helping people who really needed me. Thank you. Absolutely. A big round of applause. Thank you so much for sharing that lovely piece. Um, this story that you shared reminds me of another question that I've been thinking about for a few days, but I was a little hesitant to write down, is the money bit. For every sportsman or sports person today, um, Aryan, you also mentioned in the book that if you need to be a sportsman, you need to have deep pockets. Yeah. And I was wanting to write down a question about it, but then I said, uh, is that gonna help the youth today? And now that you shared the story, Mr. Arvind, I would like to bring this up. And can you elaborate a little bit on how hard it is as a sportsman, plus with a disability, to venture into the world of sports and how expensive and heavy it gets on your pocket? So, um for sports, of course, uh, you need financial support. And when it comes to my game, uh, which is chess mostly. So chess is not a very commercial game. It's not very popular because it is not a spectator game. Because if you know chess, you can watch. But if, if you don't know chess, if you don't play, no one will watch just like moving pieces for six hours. So Six hours? So, yeah, uh, the g international games can last up to six or seven hours. So one round, basically. So that is the main issue in chess. And blind chess is even uh, like more sad. So there is uh, no government support or private support. And uh, it's very difficult to fund. And uh, but if, if you have, uh, you know, the if you have it in you, then uh, like people come forward to help. And in my case, I think my family is the biggest support. They never said uh, like, no, we can't do this or we can't do that for you. And I come from a middle class family. So my parents or my family never stopped me. They always said, you go play and we'll manage everything. So I'm really grateful for that. And uh, it's, it's very difficult to uh, get sponsorships and all in sports. Where there is a will, there is a way, isn't it? True. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. In fact, that comes back to 
institutions like this ptks or so many other institutions that are trying their best to support even the ongc where mr sandeep singh dilo has uh, you know a job and he that's the reason that he's financially stable and he's got yes and he's got so much of recognition it is institutions like this that make people like this here possible today and there are numerous institutions i'm not saying there isn't but what mr aryan joshi said isn't wrong it's just there are too many people and far too less institutions to help people and that is why people like you and me need to have conversations like these we need to have conversations like these on an everyday basis about how we can help in any way possible whether it is listening or talking about it or attending these games or helping in charity funds or running organizations or whatever it's important that we do our part and you all are doing your part today by attending this event so a big round of applause to all of you in the audience coming back to mr sandeep singh dilo um can you talk a little bit about ongc and i mean you could uh, tell me through your mom about how you feel and what importance did it play in your life to become financially stable How do you feel about ONGC? Okay. Yeah, the thing, good. Ah, but, ah, but, ah, good. He says badminton fees. He he says badminton fees you have to pay. Club fees you have to pay. Your right. kit is so expensive. When he was playing, each deck kit used to cost more than twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. so it was very difficult yeah, but ongc uh, kit was given one kit was given to him but others he had to buy mm -hmm. and because since he was working with them he could and his father could afford it to do it and they they used to <laughs> and every tournament he used to play he used to be on duty mm -hmm. the ongc sponsored him we national and international tournaments mm -hmm. and all the tournaments all uh, he used to be on duty mm -hmm. and they used to treat him on duty and give him everything that is how he uh, played all the uh, tournaments all over the world he has played it is only the first olympics we paid otherwise all his going his coming and his staying there was paid by ongc and they looked after him in the club after yeah that's amazing a big uh, thank you to ngc yes, that i have you today NGC. on stage and i have you today talking to me and motivating people like me today to talk about sports because it's not even a part of my life but today i realize the importance of talking about it and listening about it and watching sports in general thank you so much another thing that i would like to ask you is Uh, ma'am you also could answer on your behalf is like uh, mr arvind was just saying about inclusion inclusivity sab logo ko ek saman kaise hum feel kara sakte hain bhale hi wo blind ho deaf ho bhale hi koi bhi disability ho how can we make them feel as a normal part of our society like without making them feel like a burden you treat them you treat them as a normal person don't treat them we never treated him as a handicapped child we always his sisters his everybody friends ye mat karo wo mat karo ye mat karo no he do whatever you feel like he do whatever you feel like. today he drives bike he drives car he has driven in germany also from dusseldorf to brixen he has drove the car in germany amazing big round of applause okay so anybody says he says i don't mind if somebody says that it's okay he says god has made me like this so i am a god's child so i i cannot okay 
it is only uh, i am deaf otherwise i am okay i can do everything <laughs> and if problem i write and show it right and show if somebody doesn't understand just 5 like, minutes with him and i can already understand him quite a lot just that 5 minute phone call with him as well and i can pretty much connect with him at least on a much much larger level than i would if i just met him and that makes a lot of difference acceptance as well accepting yourself and others around you not just yourself but also people around you the way they are it's important that we accept them into the, the society should also accept them absolutely Our family also help them a lot absolutely they never said that he is a handicap no nobody said mm -hmm. they always made him comfortable a big round of applause to mrs kavalji kaur as well for always supporting him and being his emotional support is there anybody in the audience who would like to ask any questions can be related to anything about what they just spoke about their life or if there's any question re relevant to how they made it so far anything is okay yes ma'am um it's a great honor to be here thank you so much uma for inviting me and ink feathers of course each of you have been an inspiration and i've got one question because i'm an art space therapy practitioner and a parenting coach If it's okay with you, I'd love to address this to the parents. Is it okay, sure. um, ma'am? You spoke about being scared of the road, sir, on the road, and I'm sure the parents, Aryan's parents, have had their own nightmares. What is it that makes you uh, pursue your like help your child and empower your child? when he wants to pursue something that is beyond what you think is possible because many parents themselves have limiting beliefs of what is possible what is not and that's something that i see so often in parents today and i can see i mean i'm calling you children because y'all have blossomed and flourished because your parents were with you So, what is it that you could advise, or what is it that made you all feel strong enough to give that strength to your child when he is doing something that goes beyond what anyone would say is possible? That's an amazing question. I just like to reiterate. Just to correct me if I'm wrong. The question mainly asks about how parents, despite their biggest fears. can help that child <clears throat> and still pursue what they want to pursue can i have the mic i think it check my close okay mm. you just have to have faith in god a faith in god and then do whatever is the best for your child and keep helping him wherever he wants and direct him to the uh, place where he should go and do it and that is all and look after him never let him feel that he is cannot do it say you can do it you can make it that is how unless you say this the child will not do it it is the will power he may you he has to do it. So faith triumphs fear yeah, yeah. every time. That's great, ma'am. Um, since the question was directed to parents, would you like to share as well? Yes, sir. Please. I would also like to share yeah, one thing please. which uh, my parents always uh, spoke to me about. Uh, after uh, my accident, uh, my father was the one who uh, assessed my situation, and uh, he says, "Arvind, what is the thing that?" uh would make you feel happy and uh, i said that uh, money will make me happy so what he did was <laughs> <laughs> so what he did was uh he said okay uh, he was the mayor of mumbai at that time and he was the mla so he said okay now you take care of the entire accounts of the house 
okay do the grocery shopping pay the salaries do everything and start utilizing the money and understand what that brought out was he focused more on my ability rather than my disability and that is what uh, parents only parents can identify and only parents can do that so if your parents they know you they will focus on your ability and my my parents did that and uh, thanks to them i'm here today in front of you thank you thank you i love your stories i would like to just come back after the session sit down with you and probably have more stories being shared um yes sir please well actually what you said is correct actually initially we also had a difficult time i mean initial in when you born we had a very difficult time to accept it but over a period of time we come to the terms then we thought it very deeply that if we do not stand who will and then we took it in our stride and uh, thought it that in every possible way we will support him and as he grew when i was i mean just i will make an incident that when we when i was playing chess with my uh, elder uh, son he used to sit and uh, 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 watch it be, i mean just try to understand the game and during that time whatever the questions and whatever the technicalities of the game he tried to understand that time i thought he had some spark in him and that is how we uh, pursued it and uh, given him the professional uh, coaching and all and uh, not only chess but what we thought is that uh, uh, he is very good in other area his memory is very sharp still also whatever games he has played 2 years back he can remember right from first move till the end wow that is Amazing. what i mean that that is what is his did he is he was very good in studies also and uh, we supported him every every way because uh, what we thought is that the limitations are what we keep in our mind so unless and until we we uh, what you can say uh, taking our stand and see to it that it is beyond i mean this thing then there there are no limitations as such and that is how we try to help him secondly doctors have advised that along with uh, a chess if you can get some physical uh, this thing which will help him out so we put him for swimming also and uh, my wife took a lot of efforts for that usually in our house we contributed it this way that whenever it is swimming she takes over whenever it is chess i used to take over so that is how in both the streams he had grown and now let me tell you that uh, uh, people know because of aryan people know us that these are the aryan parents <laughs> and that is a big proud moment for us uh, recently on 15th of august he he studies in uh, podar college of commerce and i am proud to tell you that the college has called us as a chief guest because of him in in their wow. college that was a very proud moment thank you ma'am would you like to add to that a little bit would you like to share anything that's fine no problem no force at all all right but i think he spoke for the two of you because your contribution would matter so much as well because in the book it's also mentioned about his swimming lessons aryan you say that you do enjoy chess a little more more than swimming uh, yes. isn't it can i have the mic here again yeah. thank you so you said that you do love chess a little more than swimming can you tell us a little bit about what you like about swimming and why chess may be a little more so uh, what i like about swimming is i definitely enjoy it and so my normally schedule would be i used to practice every day so when you practice for 6 to 8 hours you need some relaxation and swimming used to give me that relaxation and i love uh, water i don't know how so on beaches or swimming pool or anything i just love to swim so that's how i started swimming and continued it i still do it uh, as a hobby but yeah now i play in competitive tournaments as well but chess uh, i like more because uh, it is challenging i think so it challenges your mind and you need to basically solve problems and i like uh, like problem solving stuff so maybe that is the reason and the thrill of the game of course wow here i have can't pick up my own laundry <laughs> 
my mom would be smirking at me. She's right there in the audience and she would be smirking at me. <laughs> Anyways, thinking about all of these incidents shared, it takes me back to how I was talking about how I was very less connected to sports. However, I did play a little bit of badminton. But whenever I played, the only thing that used to be in my mind was always competition. I don't know, maybe that is the reason I was not really meant to be a sportsman or maybe I was not meant to be because competition was the first thing on my mind. What exactly, uh, Mr. Avin Prabhu, I would probably direct this question to you first because you have experience with so many athletes and world champions. What do you think drives them that makes them a great athlete? And what's, what is that that makes them extraordinary? Is it just a competition in their mind or is it more? It's very difficult to answer that question. I think uh, Ara would be more appropriate to answer that because he's a champion himself. Uh, so what goes into his mind, uh, we will ask him later. But I can tell you one thing is that uh, all athletes are sports persons are driven and they have a drive to succeed and be the best. So uh, when you pitch one against the other, they try to outmaneuver, in his case, outmaneuver, uh, outspeed or whatever, you, you know, be faster, stronger than, than the others. Even Mr. Dillon, when he played badminton, I'm sure uh, he had uh, supreme physical fitness because badminton does take that. So um, it's the rush. Is the adrenaline rush? It's it's the physical uh, strength that is required uh, to reach the top that drives them. And um, I always tell my uh, athletes over here that uh, try to try to achieve perfection. And although we know that there's nothing as perfection, but in your efforts towards perfection, you will definitely get excellence. And once you get excellence, uh, medals and things like that follow. So they strive towards perfection, but really what we are asking them to do is perform to their best ability and try to be excellent in whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, once they reach excellence, uh, it gives them a sense of achievement. And I think uh, he will be able to answer more because he's uh, both actually Mr. Dillon and he, because they have reached that excellence level. So I, sh I think you should direct yes, the question. Yes, yeah, definitely. Them. Let's forward the question uh, to you, Mr. Aryan. Tell me a little bit, I mean, along the same lines, what is that drives you? Is it just the competition, perfection? What drives you? I think Arvind sir has said it rightly that uh, getting better each day and um, going towards perfection and uh, striving to get better than yesterday, basically, and in your individual level. That is, I think, uh, the main thing which drives. And uh, I have learned this very hard way that if you focus on the competition and only the results, you will not uh, succeed. You have to focus on yourself giving your best and you have to trust the process and enjoy it. And I think that is uh, what makes uh, athletes stand out and do better than others. So I think it is more about focusing on yourself, your performance and uh, getting better each day rather than results and competitions. Thank you so much. That does make sense. Because can I have the mic a little bit? Yeah, yeah just pop. Or you do have it. Okay. Uh, you can have it. Okay. okay. I was just saying about... Maybe that is definitely a reason why I didn't pursue sports because <laughs> nothing drove me to get better than yesterday except for talking. <laughs> I think that's why I'm here. I love talking. I love conversations. And I love listening to stories like this. And let's hear from Mr. Sir, uh, you know, from Mr. Sandeep as well. What drove you other than competition? What personally drove you to be better every day to win these many medals. Next 
point you when you don't sit down you stop there, you think about the next next what is better uh-huh. and you get better for it and what is the next and you do better than that do more training mm-hmm. more training mm-hmm. so that you are fitted to do so with every tournament you want to get better and get better, better, get better and not stop at every tournament and just perform better at the next one the whole life will be like So it goes on after every eight tournament Malala, for your whole life. It was. He used to say, "Come back. My this God. tournament, I have to run twelve to thirteen kilometers every day. Twelve to thirteen kilometers every day. Every day. Out of which, a five six uh, kilometer, he used to run on the sand, so that he is faster on the court. Yeah. So he is faster on the court. Then he used to tie the weights on his legs. and wear the jacket jacket and then uh, play okay a big round of applause for that that's that's something else isn't it i just like to interrupt the session a little bit and invite mr sanjay sharma thank you so much for making it he's here he is the one that have has, has one brought sandeep yes he is also he is the one who made sandeep Yes, he's mentored Mr. Sandeep Singh Dillon here. His hard work. His hard work and your passion, I would say, <laughs> both ways, isn't it? A big round of applause for the both of them. Thank you so much for making it. He is the one that has brought these stories into this book and made this possible. you should definitely read more because these are just three and there are 10 i just have three athletes here and i'm pretty sure you've already felt goosebumps and learned so much more about them imagine the other stories other seven incredible stories we will be hearing another one this afternoon but then the rest of them you would definitely have to go back to the book and read them because it's It's simply incredible to be reading those lines. When I was reading, Mr. Sanjay, I can tell you so confidently that I was not in the space of my surroundings. I was in completely into the book. I felt like a character through them, because the way that you've written these details, tiny ones, the pun in between, the emotions that they went through is just incredible. A big round of applause. You must check out his writing style in the book. It's incredible. It will take you through the journey of these athletes in a much more defined way. And coming back to the session again. Thank you so much for your time with each one of us today here. I just want to close the session. <coughs> Excuse me. I just want to close the session with one last question which all of you could answer. I was talking about inclusivity. and how we can make all people feel welcome into the society making it accessible everywhere and we just spoke along the lines of morally and ethically emotionally accepting them how do we physically as humans accept them into the society starting off as basic as having a ramp to a stage other other than this how else do we make it an inclusive world for everyone is there any thoughts that you would like to share not just emotionally accepting them but physically also making it a better place for people who have disabilities can we start with mr arvind prabhu please so one thing uh, my friends did was that uh, so we used to party a lot before my accident and after my accident uh, it was difficult for me to get to places so my friends realized that and whenever they used to go to any restaurant or any establishment uh, they would say are yahan pe ramp hai kya and the establishment owner would say no there is no ramp over here and my friends would walk out of that restaurant and tell them because my friend cannot come here we are not going to come here also so this is what my friends did and they made so many establishments wheelchair friendly so this is what just the realization that your friend or your family uh, member cannot uh, approach a place or go to any place without having those basic needs i mean uh, for uh, the visually impaired 
you need braille to be there everywhere uh, you need tactile flooring uh, for the hearing impaired you need uh, signage is everywhere very simple basic things signage is is, is so important uh, for mr dillon uh, if there is a signage everywhere he doesn't even need to speak with anyone because the signage is over there and which will direct him if you go abroad uh, he's traveled to germany mr dillon everywhere there are signages everywhere there is tactile flooring uh, in fact uh, when i was in germany uh, i was there with my attendant and uh, we could not read german but what we did was we used to follow the tactile flooring everywhere uh, and that is the shortest route to the ticket shortest route to your compartment uh, you know your on the in 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 the metros in the suburban train or the underground so signage is very important so each one of you is try to make sure that there are signages there are ramps and make people aware that uh, you know uh, to be in truly inclusive society these are certain basic things which need to be done and uh, i'm glad to say that uh, there is a pwd law now uh, which is already there in 1995 but it's being enforced now and uh, inclusion is already happening i'm i'm, I'm really happy to see that in the in the past 35 years since i have been on the wheelchair a lot has changed and thanks to uh, people like you and and friends of mine who are making that change one small step at a time is really going to help a lot thank you big round of applause for that as individuals if we can just notice the little things i mean how hard would that be isn't it just little things that get lost just because it's easy for us to ignore them it's easy for us to not think about it but only if we took a little time to think about it talk about it we could make our surroundings if not the world at least where we live a little better for the people around us what do would you have to say about it mr aryan how would you think we can make Specifically, let's talk about blind people. How can okay. we make them feel more inclusive and one with us? So I think it's not like uh, people don't want uh, to include, uh, like people people don't want inclusion. It's more about the awareness. So we need to spread more awareness, and we we need to make people realize that what are the special needs for, say, wheelchair persons, people with visual impairment, and others. so uh, con uh considering my own disability i think uh, people need to just understand we uh, just have some different needs otherwise we are all the same basically so uh, as arvin sir rightly said tactile flooring uh, braille and mostly audio inputs may can easily help and it's not very difficult to actually make uh, a place accessible you just need to you know understand what changes are to be done and make them so i think uh, spreading awareness is the main thing and then people will definitely come forward and uh, make the world accessible in the book uh, sanjay sharma does mention about how audio inputs helped you study yeah. and how much technology has helped you true especially from listening from a screen to putting your thoughts out there yes it does help you doesn't it and would you like to elaborate a little more about the technological awareness that has already been going on uh yes uh, when it comes to audio it is very uh, fairly advanced right now and uh, considering uh, visual impairment i could do a lot of things so when i was studying in 8th or 9th grade i learned computer very well and from then i play chess i study so even right now when i'm preparing for mba entrance exams i studied everything on my laptop and i read books a lot of books i listen to music uh, i even watch movies and uh, i can even do coding so all this is possible because of advancement in advancement in technology and blind people use screen reader which basically uh, reads out everything that is written on the screen and we use uh, laptop through shortcut keys to keyboard so i think uh, technology has helped me a lot in perceiving my education chess hobbies everything so yeah that, that's a very big part i think mm -hmm. for me 
Amazing. A big round of applause for you to making that happen for yourself as well. Technology is out there. It's also about how we try to make the best out of it. And talking about inclusion, about not just the feeling, but the awareness. I would just like to emphasize on that word, awareness. To be very bluntly honest, I myself wasn't aware of so many different things about making it a comfortable space <laughs> for disabled people or differently able people in any way until I did this event. When I was planning this, thinking about this, our team was trying to look at every possible angle to try and see how we can make it a comfortable space. And we were still, I could, I'm, I, I, I should very bluntly tell you that we did struggle because none of us were taught <laughs> any of this as individuals ki ye karna hai, ye karna chahiye, ye sahi hai, aapko ye cheeze in logo ke liye rakhna chahiye, available karna chahiye, taaki inki experience smooth ho. Couple of things that we were not only aware of, we learned through you. But only the people should have time for them. People should have, have time, time for, for them. Which yes. Is Today's world, people don't have time for you. Absolutely. My, yes. Today, Please. the people, uh, world has no time for you. I can understand. Only your family can give you some uh, time. And some people do help. Some people do help. Do help. Others don't. But not everybody. It's important that each of us take it as a personal responsibility to try our best wherever we go, like Sir said, as friends when they went to a, a restaurant and they didn't have a ramp, they just said, no, that makes a difference. That plants the idea that you need to do this and you would need this, this, this to make it happen as a whole society. That's incredible. Thank you so much for all the inputs that we've had. It's incredible to be listening to so many stories. I do not want the session to end, of course, but he also posed with the Prime Minister at that time, Rajiv Gandhi and Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Incredible achievement. Can you share about how you felt from just thinking about maybe someday when you felt like I cannot do this and that day you received, received such an amazing award and honor he was not in India. He were, he had gone to play in Denmark in Olympics. After playing De Denmark, he was in Germany with his friends. And there, and here we got the message that he got a Arjun Award. So we gave him, at that time the technology was not that much, so we had to fax him. He was staying with his friends and gone out. We faxed everywhere where we do. And uh, ultimately, he came to know his friends told him, okay, you have got a big, long fax. And he saw the fax. He came and he said, Mike, I got the Arjuna Award. How can this be possible? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot get it. He says, is it true? They said, yes, it is true. You have got the Arjuna Award and you are wanted back in India. So next day, he went to the Frankfurt and changed his ticket. When he went to change his ticket, there the manager said, your ticket has been already changed because we got the order that the, the prime minister wants you in India. So you have to go by this flight. On demand. <laughs> <laughs> Big round of applause. That is the true definition of achieving glory beyond dreams. Something that... You could not really even dream about and you've achieved it. That's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And um, just to close it off, I would like to just share about um, the book. While I was reading it, I was just saying how I was, I became a part of it. I would just like to ask Oma as well to share a little bit about the book because then it would feel incomplete. 
the book is completely edited by her she spent day and night on that book along with mr sanjay sharma to make it into the perfect read that you could have so uma would you like to share a little bit about how you felt when you were you know reading these or editing these stories and just share a little bit about that experience altogether this actually happened for all the three books that uh, he has written which i have uh, was editing and uh, by the end of the journey uh, i used to remember the how each chapter started and I started saying you know uh, the book in dreams and the how the how a chapter starts in dreams and uh, now i have come a point where if sanjay sir writes something and uh, if there's no name written on it i can just guess it that he has written it based on the style because he has a voice of the you know he has a particular voice of narration and he has this witty humor of describing things which are light hearted he has this uh, very subtle uh, satirical theme for uh, describing the negative aspects of things and i absolutely love it for glory it was uh, like reading each story and uh, when i did that uh, it must have happened what 3 4 months ago when i came to know that this is each uh, story this is the player and uh, i started living the story as kashish rightly put it and by that time uh, sanjasa has this ability and this enthusiasm you know he has he puts this suggestion uma ye karte uma chalo wo karte uma have this idea uma have this concept in mind and i love working with that so for me it was an incredible journey of learning it was an incredible journey of motivation not just as a writer myself but as somebody as a human being who doesn't give up who does not throw his hands up in the air and go like okay this is happening fine no he it has to be done a particular way because it has the potential to change somebody's life and he is the one person among a few others that i know who has made this book a work that will change a lot of lives thank you absolutely a huge round of applause can we have the mic briefly for uh, sanjay sharma as yes. well i just so it would be very rude of me to not ask you this one question because it's been running in my head since you entered is you know i would leave the whole thing to be discussed later but one question is sticking me so much that i really want to ask you right away how did you decide to choose the people that you have in the book i mean you worked with a plethora of people How did you know that you needed to bring these stories to the crowd? How did you just know that these are the stories that I want to bring in my book? The well, Sandeep story was ready made for me. <laughs> <laughs> you so, coached it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, because I have known him for a long time I have even coached him. So his story was ready made. And my friend here Satya Satya Prakash Tiwari I have been in touch with him for last 3 uh, years almost and uh, Raja Ram hello sir great icons of uh, para sports so they suggested some names like aryan's name was suggested by satyaprakash uh, rahelu uh, rajinder singh rahelu's name was uh, so then i got in touch with them talked to them and then slowly pushed them into a stream where they could speak get uh, easy with me and then they would tell me their story and uh, my friend there arvind prabhu i have known him for quite a quite a few years now incredible person incredible achievements so this story also was waiting for me because he was also involved in sports and that is how i came to know him and he has done wonders so th that is how i got people like that then the, the uh, gaurav khanna who is also part of the book who is the coach of the indian para badminton uh, team which has won 613 medals internationally in last 4 years wow so he is right now in peru he is a they are he is taking his team to play a tournament so badminton uh, palak uh, kohli's story really, really fascinated me how the prime minister talked to her how she got uh, you know motivation and all these things and starting uh, is very surprising sandeep will agree with me she started playing badminton at the age of 17 by 19 she was uh, at the uh, tokyo olympics Wow. And re the youngest co qualifier ever. Years. So these are the things that I look into a story, and that's how this book came about. Amazing! A big round of applause. Thank you so much for bringing together this book for us. It's incredible. Uh, talking about just one line of what Uma said about the wit 
and the witty humor that he has i remember this one line from the book that um, i still you know giggle when i think about is when he was describing how yuvraj singh had you know smashed six sixes against the uh, england team and he just described that little segment as maybe the mahatma in his grave mahatma gandhi would also be you know giggling about the fact that this is a new route of non violence smashing them with the sixes <laughs> and that fascinated me i mean that quick comparison to everything and the metaphor just completely lined up it just made my you know thoughts go into the direction that he wanted me to isn't that incredible as a writer that he could do that the magic of a writer and that's incredible i would like to close the session now i have taken quite a lot of your time i really hope you enjoyed the answers the questions the conversation that we had and please don't go anywhere we're having another session and uh we will have the most awaited moment of the event the inauguration the cover reveal and the chief guest himself who will be here and we'll have another incredible session in uh you know moderated by mr mohit gupta don't miss me too much i will be back <laughs> he's a great moderator as well <laughs> and um just announcing the refreshments there are refreshments if you'd like us anything you know to be arranged please let us know the volunteers will be able to help you thank you so much for your time and for the incredible inputs that you've given me today i'm definitely going to take this back home and i'm you know sadly ending this session i would be happy to sit and talk to you for hours but good things come to an end and this session also comes to an end thank you so much to everybody on stage for your time thank you so much thank you so much could we have a picture please with all the athletes here i would like to invite my entire team up here inviting mr anush goel mr sagar uma yashika brosnan please if you can find yourself to the stage for a quick picture <laughs> photography team are we all in frame yeah oh okay here okay <laughs>